Welcome to task two of the OpenMC workshop. We're making materials in this task. This is an isotope chart showing all of the possible isotopes that we can use in neutronic simulations. Some of these isotopes we don't have nuclear data for, so we can't use them all, I suppose. The black line on this is stable isotopes. And if we zoom in on one of the elements, we can see that it's got one, two, three, four, five stable isotopes to make up the entire element. The relative abundance of those isotopes will be different, and that's everything you'd need to make the, the material. You can also add to that the density, and then you've got a complete OpenMC material. So uh, here's the absolute minimal material that you could ever make. Material 1 is an OpenMC material object, and we're going to add lithium, two atoms of lithium, to every one atom of oxygen. So this is done by atom fractions as default, but you can do it by weight fractions, by adding extra arguments into this add element. Then you specify the density, this time in grams per centimeter cubes, but other units are supported. So. This is adding elements, and internal to OpenMC, it knows all the natural abundance of all the isotopes. However, you can, if you want to, add nucleides. So if you know um, the relative abundance of lithium-6, 7, oxygen-16, 17, and 18, you could add them in this way. It takes a bit more um, lines of code, but it's also possible. So if you want to enrich a material, and we often do for breeder materials, we often want to enrich lithium-6, you might add an element like this, and then you can specify the enrichment target, the isotope, and the percentage you'd like to enrich it to. So in this case, it will automatically enrich the lithium-7 down to 40%. And we're also adding oxygen, again, at natural abundance and specifying the density. So you could do this with isotopes again. So here we've just replaced a natural abundance with our enriched abundance for lithium-6 and 7. So that's how you would enrich a material. You could also make materials from chemical formula. So here we've got Li2 and then O. So this could be other formula like H2O, CO2, um, and then you can also enrich them and you can also specify a different isotope for enrichment in much the same way as the other example. So this can really save a lot of lines of code and reduce the chance of making errors when you build a material from a formula, um, which isn't also always possible but good to use when it's possible. Here's an example of a uh, very large material. This one is Eurofer, and you see it's got iron, it's got boron, carbon, nickel, oh, it's got lots, lots of isotopes in there. Now you could specify this using elements and it would be uh, more concise, but this, uh, this can lead to errors when you've got to put these numbers in correctly for quite a lot of um, data points. So you might suspect there is an app for that where we have um, curated a lot of useful fusion relevant materials in a package called the Neutronics Material Maker. And then you can just reference Eurofair and um, you get a Neutronics Material Maker object. It, it needs converting to an OpenMC material because it supports other Neutronics codes like MCMP and Serpent and FizPact. So that's, that's what that line does. It just makes it useful in OpenMC. So uh, of course this is open source, there's a simple pip install and it's documented and it's included in the workshop as uh, optional tasks. But why, um, apart from saving yourself writing lots and lots of lines and just kind of looking it up from a library, why would you want to use this material maker? Well, materials also change their density with temperature. And you might not want to have to look up the density of materials at certain temperatures. So the material maker will fix that for you. So here's an example of a 
material change in density as a function of temperature and also materials change density as a function of pressure and also as a function of enrichment so this is a, a very slight uh, density change but it is still um, going to make an impact on your neutronic simulation if you ignore it. Right, so let's have a look at the task. So to run the task, I'm going to launch the OpenMC Workshop Docker, which I've previously downloaded. And I'm going to open the URL, and I'm going to navigate to task 2. And you see we've got a few different Jupyter Notebooks here. I'm going to look at the first one. And I, this one tells me how to make water. So I'm going to read through this and I'm going to run it by pressing shift and enter. And there we have our first OpenMC material. The tasks continue in this manner. Thanks for listening. Good luck with the tasks.